In this video, we're going to have a look at crossing over, more specifically the detailed mechanism of crossing over, which we didn't go through in SL. So in SL, we briefly mentioned crossing over and said that it was this process that occurred in prophase one, where we exchange genetic material between chromosomes. Okay. Now in HL, you have to be able to describe a more detailed mechanism of how this happens. And you have to be able to draw how crossing over happens. So we're just going to go through how you need to do that. So let's just read from the syllabus here. So crossing over is the exchange of DNA material between non-sister homologous chromatids. Now, what does this mean? Let's first refresh what it means to be a homologous chromatid. Imagine we have these two chromosome pairs here. These are termed to be homologous because these chromosomes and these chromosomes have the same genes in the same order. It's just that they have different alleles of those genes. Okay. So remember pink and pink mean that those have the exact same um, bases in the same order. They are identical, right? Cause they're sister chromatids, but the relationship between pink and blue is that they're homologous, right? So different alleles of the same genes in the same order. Okay, so when we say non-sister chromatids, what we mean is that we are exchanging genetic material between pink and blue. Okay, so not between pink and pink, and not between blue and blue, between pink and blue. Okay, now when this happens, the chromosomes in prophase one, so let me write that out, in prophase one, they will uh, kind of align themselves next to each other and they're then going to exchange genetic material at the exact same position. Now what this means is that if we imagine this chromatid was a hundred base pairs long, so this is chromosome, uh, this is base one and this is base a hundred, right? The link, the, ex the link that forms between these two chromosomes is going to be on position 80, the 80th uh, nucleotide on the blue chromosome and on the pink one. Okay. So because if you imagine that we're exchanging the, these last 20 base pairs from, from blue and transferring them to the, to pink, and then we're taking the pink 20 and then we're transferring them over. Well then that, when we transfer the same amount, then the, the length of the DNA doesn't change, right? Then we're always going to have a hundred no matter what. So what we don't want is when we exchange genetic material that all of a sudden when it's done, then one chromosome looks like that and the other one looks like that, right? So you want to make sure that the exchange is at the exact same position. Um, and then what you're going to form is this linkage. And this linkage is what we call a chiasmata. A chiasmata. Let's write that out again a little bit more neatly so you can read it. Chiasmata. All right. And what it's going to form when these is when this chiasmata forms, you will exchange genetic material between these non-sister chromatids. And what's going to result is what we call recombinance. So this is where the alleles are exchanged. So as you can see, this pink chromatid here now has a little bit of blue attached to it. And the, the, the blue one has a little bit of pink attached to it. So what we've done is that we've taken the allele from pink, right? This, this recessive B, and then we've transferred it to the, the, the blue chromosome, which had a dominant B at that point in time. And so then we've transferred it over. Now, why do we want to do this? Well, we said that meiosis wants to create variation, right? We want to create as weird or as many combinations of alleles as possible. And so this is a way that we can exchange two chromosomes or two alleles that were found on the same chromosome, what we call linked. Now we're going to talk about linked genes in a lot more detail in a later video. Um, and it has a uh, reference to crossing over, but just for now, just appreciate that what we're doing is we're mixing genes over, right? We're mixing alleles. So now we have lowercase a with lowercase b, which we previously didn't have, right? So we've introduced a new combination and we call these new versions of chromosomes recombinants for obvious reasons, right? Because we're recombining and uh, this is expressed uh, like this. So if these are two chromosomes, right? So that what we've said is that these are homologous chromosome pairs. So this is, for example, mom's chromosome one, and this is dad's chromosome one. Okay. And we on mom's chromosome one, we have capital A, right? Dominant A and dominant B are found on the same chromosome. That means that they are linked more detail about linked genes in a later video. And then dads, we have these two recessive linked together, right? Now, because of crossing over, what you can form is a new combination of alleles. So um, in the possible gametes that this diploid cell can form, right? Remember, this is going to be within one diploid cell. So after meiosis, 
if big A and big B are together, well then no crossing over happened, right? So that was one of the chromatids that was not involved in crossing over. So for example, this one over here, right? Because that one didn't do any crossing over. Um, and the same with lowercase a and lowercase b, right? So this one over here. So there's no crossing over happening here to form these gametes, but these gametes were formed by crossing over, which is why we call them recombinant gametes. Again, we're gonna talk about that in more detail later on. And um, let's just quickly go through how exactly you should show crossing over happening on an exam if you're asked to do that. Um, because you have to be able to draw diagrams showing schismata form by crossing over, right? So the way I would show this is I would show two chromosomes that have been linked together by a centromere like this, okay? I would then show them forming a linkage and then I would show them finally having these new chromosomes formed. And then the same thing on this side. Okay, so as you can see down here, um, we've now shown that we've taken this genetic material from one chromosome and transferred it to the other, and the same thing and vice versa. So that's all you have to be able to do to show crossing over happening. And if you do draw this diagram, then do make sure that you label what we call the chiasmata, right? So that's the connection that forms between the sister chromatids. Okay, so that's crossing over. It's the exchange of DNA material between non-sister chromatids.